Hello, this is Mr. Kenyon Nola, and I'm going to help you find the measure of an indicated angle to the nearest hundredth. All right, so angle in a triangle. Let's see what we have here. We have a 90 degree angle because it's a right triangle. We don't have this angle, we don't, and we're trying to find this angle, so we can't really use a triangle sum theorem and subtract an angle and another angle from 180 and get this angle. So uh, we have to get a little creative. So let's find the measure of the indicated angle using what the problem gives us. They give us this 52, which is the hypotenuse. And they also give us this 37. And we're trying to find this angle. This 37 is the opposite of the missing angle. So we have hypotenuse, we have opposites. Let's refer back to our notes. Um, opposite hypotenuse, opposite hypotenuse. We're going to set this problem up just like if we were trying to find a missing side, um, but we're trying to find a missing angle. So opposite hypotenuse, that is sine. So we're going to write sine of theta, or you could put question mark, or you could write x <clears throat> is equal to the opposite, which is 37 over 52. Now, how do we get, we're trying to find this angle. We just set up sine because we have opposite and hypotenuse, but we want to get theta, this missing angle by itself. How do we do that? We can't just divide sine on both sides. That, that doesn't work out like that. This isn't sine times theta. This is the sine of theta. So to get theta by itself, we have to use the inverse sign. So we're going to rewrite it as theta is equal to the inverse sign. The inverse sign is sine to the negative 1 over 37 over 52. That gets theta by itself. Now we have the angle. This angle right here, this question mark, is the inverse sine of 37 over 52. That is not a great well it's it is the answer but it's not a realistic answer okay so it's a weird answer but that's an answer we could box it we could say that theta is by itself we have the angle question mark equals that but let's use our calculator now to find the angle we're not going to use regular old sign right here but if you notice above the sign button, there's that sign to the negative one or the inverse sign. So we're going to press the second button. There's a second button or a shift button, depending on what calculator you have. You press second and then you press sign. And then look, we have uh, that inverse sign, not regular sign. So a rule to follow uh, whenever you have um, inverse sign like that, that means you're trying to find an angle. Now you just type, type in 37 over 52. So whenever you use inverse, you're trying to find an angle measure. And you have 45.360. And it says the nearest hundredth. Hundreds have two zeros in it. So two, zero, uh, uh, two decimal places. So theta is equal to 45.36 and degrees. And there is your final answer so to find a missing angle when you can't use a triangle sum theorem use inverse sine inverse cosine or inverse tangent use that second button um, and access those or use a shift button depending on what kind of calculator you have all right so let's do another example example number two we have this angle we have its opposite, and so 53 is the opposite, and we don't have the hypotenuse. This is next, this is the hypotenuse. This is, 27 is the uh, adjacent. Let's look at our notes. We have opposite, we have adjacent. We have opposite, we have adjacent. We have opposite, and we have adjacent. So we're going to use tangent. So let's write tangent of I'm going to put question mark this time because that's what we're trying to find um, instead of theta. Tangent question mark is equal to the opposite, which is 53, over the adjacent, which is 27. Remember, 
Tangent is opposite over adjacent, so 53 over 27. And we're not going to grab our calculators yet. We want to get the question mark by itself. So we're going to rewrite it as question mark is equal to the inverse tangent of 53 over 27. So there's our final answer, which is a weird looking answer. What's the measure of this angle between the two walls? Inverse tangent of 53 over 27. Don't sound like a weirdo. Grab your calculator. Don't scare them away. Yeah, grab your calculators. So if you have a calculator like this, um, there's that second button. Look, it even it even visibly changes the buttons for you. Uh, look, uh, look. Okay, so uh, we're gonna the the order of the buttons is a little different. We're gonna type in 53 divided by 27. Uh, let's make sure I press that because sometimes I have fat fingers. So 53 divided by 27 is that. That's just that's not our final answer. That's just 53 divided by 27. We want to get the inverse tangent. So now you press the second button so that you can see that inverse tangent and you press it and there you have it. There is the angle uh, is 63 and it says nearest hundredth point zero zero. So 63 degrees. There's your answer. 63 degrees. And if you wanted to do it on here, press second tangent 53 divided by 27. We have the same answer. So if you have two calculators and you just want to make sure that you press the correct buttons, do it on two different calculators. Okay, cool. Cool, cool. All right, and then the last example find the measure of the indicated angle. Is that the same problem? It is not the same problem. Okay, so we're trying to find this angle. We have the hypotenuse and we have the adjacent my J's so adjacent and let's look what we have we have adjacent we have hypotenuse we have hypotenuse adjacent we have adjacent hypotenuse that means we're going to use cosine adjacent hypotenuse so the cosine of question mark is equal to the adjacent which is 12 over 20 and then we're just going to uh, get the question mark by itself by taking this cosine and using its inverse. So inverse cosine of 12 over 20. Now let's grab our calculator. Let's put, let's type in 12 divided by 20 is 0.6 and then Look at it, the button's already there because I pressed it on the previous problem, so I don't have to press the second button again. Uh, so I'll just have to press equals. And oops, no, wrong, 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 wrong. 12 divided by 20, not equals. I have to press the, the inverse tangent, duh. There you go, that looks better. And 30, so the missing angle is 30.9, and then this one is less than four, so it's just six degrees or let's just make sure that press the correct button so second cosine of 12 divided by 20 is whoa 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 whoa, whoa. inverse cosine inverse cosine 12 divided by 20 what in the world? 53 degrees uh, 12 divided by 20 and oh, because I have calculators. I pressed the wrong button that's why oh look at that I pressed the wrong button it's 53.13 degrees good thing I use another calculator because the previous pro yeah when I messed up I pressed tangent but this time, good thing, I used another calculator and I saw that I used cosine. This is the real real answer. And when I pressed the right button because I just brain farted slash I have fat fingers slash I don't know why, I just pressed the wrong button. But when I pressed the right button and used cosine instead of tangent, I got the correct answer. So 
That is 53.13 degrees. Question mark is 53.13 degrees. And hey, let's say that there was a problem that said, hey, find this other, um, let's call this X. Find this other angle. We can now but you, by using the triangle sum theorem. 90 plus 53.13. And then we could do 180 minus 143.13. And it's 36.87. Look at that. We have all three angles now. All right, and if you wanted to get even fancier and find this missing side, we have two sides. We could use Pythagorean theorem. So there you go. That is how you find the missing angle. Okay, we use um, the inverse cosine, inverse sine, or inverse tangent to find the missing angle. Uh, don't forget to press the second button and make sure you press the correct buttons, unlike Mr. Q. Um, so. There you go. That's how you find an angle using trigonometric ratios. Have a great day.